chose to join us today. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're watching us from. This is Mavuno Church and we're about to do a couple of songs. And this first song, I want to take it back. We're throwing it back. <laughs> and as when we receive Christ, we come into a new life. And the old is gone. The shame, the pain, the sorrow is gone. And this life comes with a newness and new life. And so today we just want to celebrate new life that Jesus gives us. There is freedom and there is joy in the house of the Lord. Hey, I know you know this one. It says, I'm trading my sorrows and I'm trading my shame. Joy of the Lord. Will you help me sing with me? I'm trading my 
somebody join us in making this prayer wherever you are just say Jesus because you have good plans for me I choose to say yes to those plans I choose to say yes to everything that you have for me Jesus you are the one that I follow Jesus you are the one that I will follow all the days of my life hallelujah We don't want to do life on our own, God. We want to follow you, for in you we find true life. I thought that I could do it. Thought that I could do it. Thought that I could make it. Thought that I could build it on my own. But I've come to see. But I've come to see that as I've tried to fill the void, nothing else could fill the hole. Be a fool. Be a to gain the world and lose my soul. I choose you. I choose you. Only you. Only you. We declare that Jesus, you're the one we follow. Jesus, you're the one I follow. I give you today. I give you my today, tomorrow. Forever. Forever, Lord, I promise to take my cross and follow you jesus you're the one jesus you're the one i follow i give you my today tomorrow forever lord i promise to take my cross and follow you
God, that we do not follow a God who is a tyrant. That yes, you are God, but you are also a loving Father. So your plans, so your plans for us are good. Your ways for us are good. They are better than anything that we could ever come up with for ourselves. So Lord, we gladly follow you. We gladly choose you. And we celebrate your will and your way for us as individuals and this community on Mavuno Online. It's in Jesus' name we are praised, worshipped and believed. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Wow, 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 what a wonderful time of worship. It's always a privilege and a blessing to spend the time worshiping the Lord through worship, through music and, uh, and song. Uh, we're so excited that you're worshiping with us uh, today. We're glad that you're a part of our worship experience uh, today. Uh, for all our members watching from our different viewing centers, Karibu Sana, that means you're welcome. Uh, we're glad that you're able to worship with us. If you're a first-time visitor, uh, please put, you know, put your name on the chat so that we can see you and we can get to say hi. But we just want to say thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Uh, we're getting into a time that we absolutely love. It's a time that we find to be a privilege uh, and so we love to do this. We love to give. And I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to read just uh, Genesis chapter 8. Sorry, I'm going to read one verse. And that's verse 22. It says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. While the earth remains. This was God speaking to Noah after the flood. And he says that there are some things that will not change for the duration for so long as the earth exists. And I want to focus on the first one. He says that seed time and harvest shall never cease. A lot of life exists under this principle of seed time and harvest. There are many places where you will find that there is a thing that you can consider a seed which is something you invest and there is an outcome which is what you harvest or you reap from that seed. And I want to speak specifically, we're talking about giving. One of the principles here, for example, is that, you know, Jesus was speaking and he said that he who can be trusted with little will be, uh, shall be trusted with much. And what Jesus was saying is that the seed is faithfulness with little and the harvest is that you shall be entrusted with much. That was those are the words of Jesus. When we come and give, when we bring our offerings to the house of the Lord, when we bring our tithes, uh, you know, a, 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 a 10 percent of our income, which is what we do, it's our tradition here at Mavuno uh, and we follow the scriptures for that. When we align our lives and honor God and scriptural teaching regarding our finances, then we are, there are things that we will reap from that faithfulness because seed time and harvest shall never cease. So the seed is that I'm aligning my life, I'm submitting my finances to the will of God and to his instruction in the scriptures. And the harvest is that I can be trusted with much, that God takes it upon himself to provide greater resources for every need and to even exceed every need. So may God bless you as you give and may you experience every promise that God has spoken in his word uh, and may he glorify himself through you and in your life even as you're faithful in your giving in Jesus name. Amen.
good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching this uh, from. Uh, we are welcome to Mavuno Church. We're so glad that you're watching and wor worshiping with us uh, today. I'm Pastor James Moshaya. I have the privilege of serving as one of the pastors in this incredible, incredible family of faith that is called uh, Mavuno Church. I serve under the uh, leadership of our senior pastors, Pastor Murevi and Pastor Karo Wanjao, the incredible spiritual parents that God has given us as a family of faith. Hey, maybe we are completely new to you. This video just sort of popped up on your gadget or on your TV screen. Uh, maybe it was sent to you by someone who told you you need to worship with us. You need to visit uh, a Mavuno church service and that's how you ended up here. In case you do not know who we are, we are a family of about 40 locations in about 10 different nations uh, in the world. Uh, we're based out of Nairobi, Kenya and that's, you know, we're recording this just outside of Nairobi and we're really glad that you're joining us if this is your very first time. Uh, you know, whether you landed on this video through an invitation, whether you landed, you know, it seems like by chance we are really truly thankful that you're able to join us. And we want to say, as we say here in Kenya, Karibu Sana, welcome to Mavuno Church. Hey, for those of you watching from our different viewing centers, we're so glad that we get to worship God together with you and to learn from the word uh, uh, together at the same time. This month, we're going through a sermon series that we're calling X Factor. X Factor superpower your life. X factor, superpower your life. And we have learned several lessons so far. On the first week, we learned uh, that, that, that the, the X factor is the Holy Spirit of God, that God gives us the Holy Spirit who empowers us for certain supernatural uh, things, and that this is available. Uh, we also learned that this is available to every believer. We said that the anointing is available to every believer, not just those in upfront ministry. The X factor is the Holy Spirit, and he's available to every believer, not just those in upfront ministry. On the second Sunday, we learned that the true measure of the X factor is character, not power. Because sometimes there are people who exercise supernatural power, but it is actually not power from God. And so the way to know the source of the power, you can know whether a person is submitted to the Holy Spirit by observing the fruit, by seeing the character, uh, you know, how they are living their life. And that's by observing the fruit of the Spirit as, as, as the Apostle Paul describes it in the book of Galatians chapter 5. And we said that the true measure of the X factor is character, not power. Last Sunday, we learned that the X factor is demonstrated through spiritual gifts and every believer must bring their gift to bear. What we learned is that a spiritual gift is, a, is an unfair advantage. It's, it's, it's when the Holy Spirit empowers you so that you're better at, at some things than other people are. It's a supernatural empowerment. And that's how the presence of the X factor, the presence of the Holy Spirit is demonstrated. And we also learned that every believer, every follower of Jesus needs to bring their gifts to bear so that we can be effective in the assignment that God has given us and to the glory of God. You know, we've been looking at an incredible story in the book of Acts. It's packed with supernatural power being exercised by different characters. Uh, it's mostly about Philip, but we saw, you know, Peter enter the story, John enter the story. Uh, and we see people in this story with dramatic demonstrations of the presence of the X factor in their lives. And the interesting thing is that this story is not a one-off. We've only read from Acts chapter 8, but, but, but the story is repeated over and over and over. Uh, in, in, uh, you know, as the book chronicles the stories of the early Jesus followers, it reads like an action movie. It reads like, you know, like an action thriller. It's dramatic. There's amazing, incredible things happening. Throughout the book of Acts, we see the followers of Jesus as they address questions that came up for the church, the early followers of Jesus. We see them getting in trouble with religious leaders who are concerned that, this, that they would be rendered irrelevant by this new system of belief. We see them, uh, you know, getting in trouble with civic and political leaders. These guys were threatened because they were preaching about a new king that they called the Messiah, and the political and civic leaders thought that this was threatening to them. We see them attacked by business leaders as their businesses run the risk of being broken. Their business models were going to be inefficient on account of the effectiveness of this new faith that they were introducing. And they, these guys, it's like they were constantly getting in trouble. In fact, a lot of the book of Acts is these guys getting in trouble. But it's because they are moving from town to town, community to community, and they are spreading the message of, of, of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. But the Holy Spirit is empowering them, and they are doing amazing things as they go over and over again. We see clear 
unequivocal demonstrations of the X factor in their lives in different ways. And allow me to start us off today from what I believe is the foundational verse for the things that we see in the entire book of Acts. That's Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. We've read it before. We've mentioned it as we've been going through the series. I want us to start us off there and to use it as a launch pad. And here's what it says. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This was Jesus speaking to his followers just before, you know, he, he, he left the earth and was giving them an assignment. At the core of it, this verse tells us two very critical things. The first thing it tells us is the most significant thing that would happen in the lives of, of Jesus' followers when he left. It tells us the most significant thing that would happen to them, that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them. But the second thing is, 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 the, is it tells us what the assignment would be for which the Holy Spirit would be empowering them. And that assignment is witness. It says you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. And so these are the two things we must draw from this scripture. The first thing is that the purpose of the X factor is witness. The purpose of the X factor is witness. Allow me to say that again. The purpose of the X factor is witness. Jesus' goal was that people everywhere, all around the world, would hear about him, that they would hear about his death on the cross, that they would understand the love that God the Father has for every single human being, which is why Jesus came onto the earth and died on the cross, and that they would be connected with God's love, that they would receive a testimony of God's love for them. And, and, you know, this pro in, in the promise that he was making for power, what Jesus was saying is that I'm giving you the assignment to be my witnesses, but I'm making available the resource that you will need in order for that assignment to be successful. Consider the story of Philip that we have been talking about in Acts chapter 8. I'm going to read, uh, you know, verse 5 and verse 6, and then I'll jump to verse 12. Acts 8, verse 5 and verse 6, and then I'll jump to verse 12. It says, Philip, for example went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Verse 12 says, But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. They came to see the miracles. They heard the message that he taught. They were transformed. They came for the drama. They left with new lives. They left having received the message, the good news about Jesus who died on the cross because the purpose of the X factor is witness. The reason Philip carries the capacity to perform miracles is not for his entertainment. It's not for his fame. It is so that many people can become Jesus followers after observing him and after interacting with him. As you read through the book of Acts, you will find that over and over and over there are different demonstrations of the power of God through the followers of Jesus and in the followers of Jesus. But over and over and over you will find that men and women are drawn to Jesus, are drawn to the gospel because of the power of God being demonstrated by these early Jesus followers. Because the purpose of the X factor is witness. The second thing that I want us to draw from this verse is a massive implication. It's a massive implication. It's not in the verse, but I see it within the scripture. And this is what it is. Because witness is the assignment of every believer, power must be a promise to every believer. Because witness is an assignment to every believer, power must be a promise to every believer. We talked about this, uh, you know, in the first uh, week of this sermon series. We said that the anointing is for every believer. Why? Because the assignment is for everyone. Jesus says you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. That assignment to witness was not, was not just for the early believers. It was actually for every Jesus follower, yourself included and myself included. And so because witness is the assignment of every believer, power must be a promise to every believer. It means that this uh, 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 X factor that we are talking about, these demonstrations of power, this capacity to exercise and demonstrate the power of God, it is available to you and to me today if we are following Jesus. And this brings us, these two things, the purpose of the X factor is witness, 
the, 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 the assignment is to every believer, and therefore the power is a promise to every believer. I want us to build from these two things and enter into our conversation for today. If the power for, you know, the purpose for the power is witness, here's the thing that I have come to conclude. The greater the power, the more effective the witness. The greater the power, the more effective the witness. We see it in, what, in, in our core reading, Acts chapter 8, as we've read through the story of Philip. Listen to how Acts 8 verse 8, uh, what, what Acts 8 verse 8 says. It says, so there was great joy in that city. There was great joy in that city, speaking about the city of Samaria. Listen, one man enters a city, one man enters a city, and the outcome is a radical transformation for the entire city. A city is turned upside down because a single individual, not an army, not a group, one man enters a city, and the city is transformed from gloom to joy. That's the power of the X factor. But why is an entire city transformed? Because of the magnitude of the demonstration of God's power in and through Philip's life. The magnitude of the demonstration of God's power it results in not just one life, not just two lives, but an entire city being transformed. You see, the greater the power, the more effective the witness. I'm saying all this to build us up to the question I want us to answer as we bring our sermon series to a close. And the question is this, how do I grow in power? How do I grow in power? Because the greater the power, the more effective the witness. And witness is your assignment, and it is my assignment. How do I grow in the demonstrations of the presence of the X factor, the Holy Spirit of God in my life? How do I grow in power? And to answer this question, I want to lead us to a verse that Pastor um, M, our senior pastor, Pastor Morithi Wanja, we call him Pastor M for our visitors, that he was led to last year as a prophetic word for the Mavuno family for 2023. And it's the second part of Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. Here's what it says. It says, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great, great exploits. Now, Daniel was a man who was greatly used by God. Daniel was greatly used by God, especially as a prophet. There are things that are happening today. There are things that will happen at the end of the world that God revealed to Daniel. In this verse, this servant of God is saying that exploits are possible. He's saying that exploits are possible. In fact, he's saying that for some people, there is the possibility of living in and exercising great exploits. That's what he says. And then he gives us an insight on who those people are, the people who will have the capacity to exercise great exploits. And he says to us, it is the people who know their God. It is the people who know their God. And the lesson that I see in this verse is this, that the foundation for power is intimacy with God. The foundation for power is intimacy with God. Listen, it is the people who invest significantly in their intimacy, their knowledge of God. It is those people who will grow in their capacity to demonstrate his power. The people who invest in their knowledge of God are the ones who will grow in the capacity for the X factor to move in their lives and through their lives. I see this, this, this truth illustrated in Daniel's own life. There's a peculiar verse in Daniel chapter 10, uh, you know, verse 11. I want to read it. And I, and I see it as an illustration that, that, that the foundation for power is intimacy with God. Daniel chapter 10, verse 11 says, And the man said to me, an angel had appeared to Daniel as he was in prayer, trusting God, waiting on God for an answer. And he says, And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God, so listen carefully to what I have to say to you. And he continues to deliver the message. I want you to focus on what the angel says to Daniel. He says, you are very precious to God. Those are the words that the angel says. Now, some people read their Bible with very spiritual lenses. And so they, you know, they only draw out deep spiritual lessons. But I like to read my Bible with imagination. When I engage my imagination, I ask myself, how does the angel know that Daniel is precious to God? As I thought about it, my conclusion is this. The heavenly hosts have observed. They've looked at God interacting with Daniel. They've looked at God's response when Daniel starts to pray. You know, the Bible tells us he used to pray three times a day. They've observed him and they have seen, they have come to the conclusion, oh my goodness, God really loves Daniel. He is precious to him. 
In fact, when I push my imagination a little bit, what I see is this. I see the angels walking around the streets of heaven, gossiping about Daniel, saying, ah, but have you seen how much God loves him? The angels, the heavenly hosts, have a testimony about the relationship between Daniel and his God, and they have testified that, oh my goodness, Daniel is precious before the Lord. This is someone that God cherishes. Daniel was a powerful man, but he had invested in intimacy with God because, you see, the foundation for power is intimacy with God. The foundation for power is intimacy with God. I want to I wanna drill in a little bit because I don't want you to miss it. Listen, Moses had some incredible exploits. We see water coming out of rocks. We see plagues bringing down an entire advanced superpower, the kingdom of Egypt. We see that, 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 that Moses brings this down. He's performing miraculous things left, right, and center. We see the exploits. But we also see, if you read carefully, you will see that Moses spoke to God face to face as a man talks to his friend. That's what the Bible tells us. In Psalm 103, there's a very interesting verse that it says to us that, that, that it's the psalmist is speaking about God and he says he made known his, act, his, his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. And what the psalmist was saying is there are two levels of knowledge. That there are people who know the things God does. Those are his acts. And then there was Moses who knew the ways of God. He knew the heart of God. Moses had an intimate relationship with God. I see it over and over and over. I won't linger for too long. I want to talk about Joshua, the man who takes over from Moses, the only person to ever have had the sun stand still. That during a battle, he said, if the sun sets, I will lose, I will not get as definitive a victory as I designed. So he said, sun stand still. And the sun poses and the moon poses and the day is stretched. What kind of exploits is that? Listen, there are exploits and then there are exploits. The sun stood still for Joshua. But when you read the story carefully, you find that Moses was extremely deep with God. But the Bible says that when Moses finished connecting with God in the tabernacle, when Moses would leave, Joshua remained outside the door of the tabernacle, investing in his relationship with God. Because you see, the foundation for power is intimacy with God. That is the man who can make the sun stand still. The Bible tells us on the night that he was arrested, Jesus goes up to the mountain to pray. And it says that he's going up to pray as was his custom. Over 20 times in the Gospels, the Bible records that Jesus went away to pray, that Jesus spent time in prayer. Jesus invests regularly and consistently in his work with God. He's able to say in John chapter 5, I believe it is, that I, I do nothing except that which I see my father doing. What he's saying is, I'm so close to God. Anything you see me doing, I know this is what is on, on the heart of my father. That's the level of intimacy that Jesus is operating at. Do you want to know what exploits are? You know, the, the exploits are recorded throughout the Gospels. One of my favorites is in Mark chapter 5. Jesus encounters a man possessed by a legion of demons. And, they, and, and the man runs to him. His body is being, con you know, in his voice, he's being controlled by these demons. And they come towards Jesus. And they say, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? Something like that. And it says, the Bible says, because Jesus had commanded them to leave. Do you know what the interesting thing is? Jesus had not yet spoken a word to that man. In other words, Jesus was operating at a level of authority that the demons saw him and they received the message before he had spoken. That's what exploits are. That those who know their God shall be great and do great, uh, shall be great, shall be strong and do great exploits. The foundation for power is intimacy with God. We are asking ourselves a critical question, how do I grow in power? Because the greater the power, the more effective the witness. The greater the power, the more effective the witness. The greater the power, the more effective the witness. So how do you grow in power? How do I grow in power so that I can grow in effectiveness in my assignment to be a witness to the goodness of Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Lord, our Savior? The lesson I learned from the book of Daniel chapter 11 from what has been our theme verse this year as the Mavuno family is this. If you want to grow in power, build your intimacy. If you want to grow in power, build your intimacy. This is the secret because the foundation for power is intimacy with God. If you want to grow in power, you must build your intimacy. We will close this series with some practical steps on building intimacy. How do I build my relationship with God? How do I build my knowledge of God? How do I build my intimacy with God? And I'm going to give us uh, three practical steps. And the first is prayer. 
Point number one is prayer. It occurs to me the apostles in the book of Acts are operating at some dramatic level of spiritual authority. They are doing incredible things. They are performing great exploits. They are amazing, almost unbelievable demonstrations of the presence of the X factor in their lives. But I see that in Acts chapter 6, an, a, an important task was presented before the church. And they said, the apostles said, let us not engage in this task. We see that it is important, but allow us not to engage in it so that we may focus on prayer and on teaching the word. I see that the people who secluded themselves and avoided even important tasks so that they could focus on prayer are the people who then operated with a high level of, of spiritual authority, a high level of exploits, that the greatest demonstrations of the X factor are, 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 are seen and observed in the lives of those people. I see that prayer is time spent in God's presence, and it is a critical tool in building intimacy. The more time you spend with someone, the better you will know them. The apostles spent that time, and they grew in their intimacy with God, and they were clear, their lives were clearly marked with the power and the presence of the X factor. One of the most critical things you can do in Mavuno is engage in our daily prayers every weekday morning from 4.30 to 5.30 a.m., we resume our morning prayers on Monday, 4th September. This is a critical place for you to build your intimacy so that you can grow in your effectiveness. You can grow in power and therefore in your effectiveness as a witness. Why? Because if you want to grow in power, you need to build your intimacy. The first step, how do you grow in intimacy with God? The first thing is prayer. The second thing is fasting. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 describes his life as a follower of Jesus and as a servant of the gospel. And he, he describes the price he has paid as a servant who is committed to spreading the gospel. And one of the things he highlights as a, as a marker of his life is he says that he has engaged in fastings. Fastings, you had that right, fastings, plural. Listen, I don't even know whether that word is accurate grammatically. I don't know whether that's proper English. But I believe that Paul was trying to highlight the fact that this is a central marker of his life, is that he's regularly, consistently engaging in fasting. It is a central practice in his life as a Jesus follower and as a minister that God is using powerfully. You see, fasting steals the distractions. Fasting silences the noise. Day-to-day -day life is full of distractions and loud noise. And, and what fasting does is it calms all those things down. It steals the distractions and it silences the noise. And it gives us an opportunity to hear God clearly, to see God clearly, to connect with him a little more intimately. Fasting is a critical way in which we grow in our knowledge of God. This is why at Mavuno, three times a year, we have an extended time of fasting and prayer. And on the, from the 4th to the 10th of September, from the 4th to the 10th of September, we'll be getting into our seven-day liquid fast because we want to grow in our intimacy with God because we desire to grow in power so that we can be more effective in our, wit in our witness as witnesses of Jesus Christ. So here's what you must do. Number one, over the next week, you must start to prepare yourself for that fast. And secondly, when we start on Monday 4th, you must commit to get on that fast together with the rest of the Mavuno family. On Mavuno Church Org, on our website, mavunochurch.org, uh, you can find resources including a prayer guide, including uh, just some, some guidelines uh, uh, on how to fast effectively and even how to prepare yourself. If you haven't uh, read those, if you haven't watched, there's a, there's a powerful video there. You need to check that out so that you can be ready for our seven-day liquid fast. Why do we fast three times a year at Mavuno? It is because we want you to grow in power. That's why our senior pastor leads us, he has led us in that direction. He wants, we want you to grow in power because if you want to grow in power, you must build your intimacy with God and fasting is a critical tool that, we, that God uses to help us grow in our intimacy with him. So the first thing in prayer, the second thing is fasting and the third thing is reading God's word. The Bible is one of the clearest ways through which God reveals himself to us. This year, as the Mavuno family, we are reading through the New Testament. Uh, we're going through a plan by the Bible project. And, 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 you know, it's been an incredible read. But the reason we are reading through the scriptures is because we want to know God. 
The scriptures are the place where he openly reveals himself to us. And we want to grow in our knowledge of him. We want to build in our intimacy. And as we grow in our intimacy with God, we will grow in our capacity to demonstrate the X factor, our capacity for God's power to be demonstrated through our lives so that we can be effective witnesses for his glory. Jesus left every one of his followers the assignment of being a witness. And for the assignment, he provided the resource that is necessary. The most beautiful thing, guys, is that Jesus made a promise. He said, and you will receive power. But more importantly, Jesus kept his promise. The Holy Spirit came and the power has been made available. The Holy Spirit is present. We see it in the book of Acts. But that's not, it's not limited to that. Even today, there are men, women, children, yeah, youth and even children who operate in an amazing demonstration and manifestation of God's power in their lives and through their lives. They are not posers or pretenders looking to get money. They are genuine Jesus followers who God allows to be channels of his power. And his power breaks out of their lives. And, and there are clear demonstrations that a good God is behind them and empowering them. And giving them the capacity to bring transformation and blessing to the lives of many. This happens because Jesus made a promise and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And Jesus kept his promise. Now, listen. In my experience, every man, every woman, every person who exercises, you know, a dramatic demonstration or a dramatic level of God's power being demonstrated in their lives, none of those people has a pedestrian outlook to their relationship with God. Each one of them has a laser focus on building their intimacy, growing in their knowledge of God, investing passionately and with full commitment in, 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 in their relationship and their intimacy with God. Because the foundation for power is intimacy. As they grow in their intimacy, they grow in the demonstrations of God's power in their lives and through their lives. So remember, if you want to grow in power, what you need to do is build your intimacy. I'll say that one last time. If you want to grow in power, build your intimacy. I'm going to close for us with a time of prayer. Maybe you're watching this. You haven't surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus. You haven't received the gospel that we are talking about, that the people in the book of Acts were spreading. And I want to say to you, uh, the second prayer, I want to pray uh, just for a special impartation of grace, of God's power, uh, well, uh, you know, over our lives. But the first step is you have to be a follower of Jesus in order for you to qualify, to be his witness, and in order for you to qualify, to receive the power that gives you the capacity to be his witness. And so if you're watching this and you're not born again, allow me to just lead you in this prayer. If you want to give your life to Christ now, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love. I confess that I have sinned. And today, I receive the blessing of forgiveness. I receive your mercy. And I commit to honor you for the rest of my life. And to live in full obedience. I thank you for the blessing of Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. Amen, amen. Congratulations. If you have said this prayer, kindly just put your contacts uh, uh, in the chat so that we can be able to get in touch with you uh, so that we can lead you on the next steps for this decision that you have made. Uh, for those of us who are Jesus followers as you're watching this, I want us to trust God. Uh, I want to pray just for a, a new impartation. One of the things I'm very clear on is that God is infinite. God is infinite. So whatever your experience of God has been up until this moment, there is more to be had. However you have experienced God in your life, however much power you have experienced up until this point, whatever kind of exploits you have been able to exercise and demonstrate until now, there is the capacity for more because God is infinite. And so I want to pray for an, an impartation of new grace, a new level, a new manifestation of God's power in your life so that you can grow more effective. You can become more effective as a witness of Jesus and of his love for the world. And so I want to pray for you. And I want you to just trust God. Maybe you can just whisper a prayer for yourself and tell God, I want more. I, I, I'm not settling. I want to be more effective. And so I want to grow in power, even as I pray for you. My Lord and my King, I speak a blessing over your sons and daughters as they watch this. I release a fresh anointing right now. I thank you that you're depositing a grace for prayer, that there are men and women and even children who will pray like they have never prayed before as you deposit in them the capacity and the 
gift, a spiritual gift of intercession. I thank you for prophets that you're raising up and giving a clarity of understanding of what is happening in the prophetic and what is happening in the spiritual so that they will be able to speak to, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know to, to, to lead and to guide and to instruct even the church leaders around them on how to pray and how to respond to what is happening spiritually. I thank you, my Lord and my King, that you're raising evangelists. I thank you that they will have stories like Philip, that an entire city was transformed because he entered that city. I thank you for gifts of healing, that there are men and women who are feeling a physical presence, in the, a, a physical manifestation of your presence, Holy Spirit of God, as you empower them with a gift of healing. I thank you that they will lay hands on many people and they will receive their healing in Jesus' name. I thank you that you're unlocking a gift of praying in tongues for some who are watching this right now. I thank you that you're releasing an impartation of faith and wisdom. I thank you for words of knowledge, a capacity to know what to say in the right moment to the glory and to the honor of your name. My Father and my God, I thank you for every gift that you're depositing upon your sons and daughters right now. I thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for the ways that you're empowering them. I pray that Jehovah, King of glory, above all, you will deposit in us a hunger and a thirst for you that cannot be quenched. A hunger that will cause us to pursue intimacy, to pursue you, to seek knowing you like we have never sought you before. That we will be excited about our seasons of fasting. That we will be excited to wake up in the morning to pray. That we will be excited to read our Bible, to seek you in every way. And as we grow our Lord and our King, in our intimacy with you, I thank you for growing and increasing demonstrations of your presence in our life. We thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit of God. I thank you that you're the X factor who superpowers our lives and empowers us for the supernatural. I release upon you, God's people, the capacity to live a life marked by supernatural outcomes. I declare that it is your portion in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for every life that will be transformed because of the manifestations of your power and of your presence, Holy Spirit of God, in your sons and daughters watching this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to say a final prayer as we bring this to a close. I want us to trust God for a miracle. You know, we spoke about this, I think it was on the first week or the second week, that a miracle is when an impossible situation is resolved. And as we bring this to a close, the reason I want to say this prayer is because one of the things that bears the greatest witness is a miracle. If you come to your friend and you say, this has happened in my life and it was impossible before, you have the capacity to say to them, look what the Lord has done. And so for some of us, we need a miracle in a health situation. For some of us, we need a miracle, uh, you know, in a marriage situation. For some of us, we need a miracle, uh, 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 you know, business breakthrough, a job opening, whatever it may be. I just want to say this prayer over you and I want you to trust God. I'm trusting God together with you that in the week ahead, a miracle, you have a testimony of an impossible situation that God only, God alone could resolve and that he has resolved it and you can live with a testimony and you can witness that God is good and God is powerful. My father and my king, you are the God of the impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. And so over every impossible, you know, situation in health, we call you Jehovah Rapha and we declare healing in Jesus' name. Our Lord and our king, where our families have been under pressure and our marriages have been falling apart, in the name of Jesus, I declare miraculous restoration and reconciliation. Where we are trusting you in our finances, our father and our God, I pray for open doors. If it is a job, my Lord and my king, I pray that this week you will open open that door. If it is a business breakthrough, we are running a business, but it's been in trouble. I pray for a miracle opportunity this week that will lead to a testimony that only God could have accomplished this. I pray that in every situation, in every impossibility, you will demonstrate your power. You will give us a testimony that we can use to witness and to declare there is a God in heaven and he loves me and he loves you and this is how he has come through for me. We thank you for every testimony and for every situation that you have resolved today. We commit ourselves to you. We thank you for your love and above all, we thank you for the X factor, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives to lead us and to guide us and to give us victory in our assignments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead and see you next Sunday.